Hello, welcome to the April market and world event overall astrology forecast, which I am doing a bit different this month. So let me know down below how you like this new format where I'm doing it chronologically and having all the charts mentioned as they're relevant throughout the month instead of Bitcoin, then ETH, then the US, and then trying to synthesize it all at the end. I am finding more and more that my errors in predicting the market come from when I do not take into account the context of the astrology at a more fundamental world event level. So Bitcoin's astrology can look good, whatever, but if the United States looks like something is, is happening that's really, really unfortunate, or the world itself is going through, you know, like war-like ev events, war, literal war, and also economic warfare, etc., those things are going to override momentary good astrology for Bitcoin or ETH, etc. Just like how altcoin astrology, whether it's good or bad, relates to whether Bitcoin is symbolizing good or bad. Like there's always a context. So in working with that together, that has helped me immensely in the way that I've been able to formulate predictions in my own trades during this time that I've been largely off Twitter, largely off making more specific calls as I refine a little bit more and more my context analysis. So I'm doing this differently. I'm talking about the world events, world leaders when relevant, and Bitcoin ETH when relevant as well. Because this month in particular, there's a lot more going on geopolitically than directly financially, even though financial astrology is playing a, a role in the way that I'm formulating what I'm seeing. So I hope that that makes sense. You can give me feedback down below as to how this feels for you. Um, this is the third time I filmed this intro, by the way. I filmed it before the video, accidentally deleted it, filmed it after, did not like that I had gum in the back of my mouth, uh, which was preventing me from speaking clearly. So now I'm doing this for the third time and I hope third time is a charm. Excited to get into this April. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you. Alrighty, <laughs> hello from the hotel desk now. So the first major event happening in April is the April new moon and it's conjunct Chiron within one degree, which shows it's a very emotional, but very empowered new beginning. New moons are new beginnings. And in Putin's chart, this is happening in his sixth house of who he works with. And it's probably not referring to the sixth house in its health issue aspect, frankly, because the sixth house can be both health issues or coworkers, people you work with, can also be pets. Um, for him, I think that the people he works with scenario makes the most sense because of the amount of hiring, firing, getting rid of people that he's been doing with his cabinet, um, likely due to, um, I've, I've heard different takes on this, but likely due to paranoia about loyalty um, can be pretty, pretty uh, typical, like uh, authoritarian behavior to like dramatically hire, fire everything with your staff. So I'd say that this new moon looks like a new beginning with some of his staff, some of his inner circle. It is opposing his Libra stellium in his 12th house, which is highly, highly configured. So it looks like a new beginning for people that work under him. For Bitcoin, new moons are often local tops, meaning that we pivot up, we top, and then we pivot down after the new moon. The new moon is generally a pivot up to dump down, and we go down until the full moon two weeks later. So with Bitcoin having a natal Aries moon and uh, the fact that that's generally a good sign that there's a new moon happening in the same sign as the natal moon, this does look strong. Um, and Jupiter is opposing Bitcoin Saturn very closely, which shows a growth of Saturn being support. Jupiter's growth, Saturn is support. So I think that we could bottom out after this at a very predictable, very secure support level. Uh, we can take a look at the charts for what I would specifically think around that. But with a new moon being a pivot to downside and there being a Jupiter-Saturn opposition and Jupiter being growth, Saturn being limits or obstacles, I think that we do have a top that we then dump to, but we dump down to a logical support level. It's not a terrible nuke, but it is definitely going down until the full moon later on in the month. For ETH, similarly, if Bitcoin is uh, pivoting down, then I would expect the same for ETH. This new moon is squaring Ethereum's Pluto pretty closely by degree. The new moon will be at 12 degrees. I just have it a few hours later here, but realistically it'll be squaring ETH's Pluto, which is uh, an aspect of volatility. Uh, Pluto is dramatic, therefore in a financial context, it's often volatile. So I'd see this to also pivot to the downside. However, on April 5th, Venus will conjoin Bitcoin's natal Venus. So a Venus return is very, very positive. Bitcoin natally has Venus in a sign it does very well in, in the sign of its exaltation, which is Pisces. And so having Venus return there is very, very strong. Um, that's nice. However, I do not think that it outweighs the Mars-Saturn conjunction going on. 
As I have spoken in multiple videos in multiple contexts, from April 4th to the 6th, Mars and Saturn are together in the sign of Aquarius. Mars is aggression, Saturn is limitation, so it's like pressing the gas and the brakes at the same time, and I really do not like to see this at times of war, especially given the fact that it is squaring the nodes at the 90 degree angle, which is an intense bending point of a missing piece or focal point. I really, really don't like this. Um, it's on Bitcoin's natal Neptune, which represents spreading everywhere, a spread of something, lack of boundaries. So it looks like this, this is not good. This is really, really not good financially for the market. If I see a Mars-Saturn conjunction happening on Neptune, that's like the spread of something very militaristic and unwanted for whatever the natal chart is, in this case, Bitcoin. So these events in a financial context don't really don't look at this first week of April. For Putin, this is happening right on his North Node and IC. North node represents increase and I see is home family property showing that um, given his political leadership status, he is obsessed with increase in land, increase in ownership, increase in reach of uh, what he considers his nation. Like literally this is just a North node I see. Like this is not me making it up to fit that. Uh, I was saying this one, two years ago when I started talking about Putin and didn't really have as much awareness as I do now of what's going on in the area. Events that happen on the North Node tend to propel you forward in the public eye, um, so obviously, to say the least. Um, Mars-Saturn is very, very aggressive, and North Node tends to be provocative or uh, something that is out of the normal mainstream trajectory. It's uh, very provocative. It, 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 in many contexts, the North Node is provocative. This is exactly opposite his natal Pluto on the midheaven. So oppositions to Pluto are very uh, challengingly transformative, usually in a negative sense of having to, uh, they're, they tend to be painful. On his midheaven, this is, it doesn't make a genius, so I'm just going to say it in the way that might sound stupid or obvious, but what he does in a military sense um, to increase his, the amount of land that he has is extremely challenging towards his public image. Uh, I know you can say no shit, but like literally the astrology is saying this. I'd say that with this happening on his north node, it looks like he's the one uh, doing this aggressively. It's also squaring his natal mercury in the 10th. It's also trying his natal mercury in the 12th, which looks like he could be having some behind the scenes information that allows him to do this. So there's some indications also in Zelensky's chart, as I've said for a few videos about him. Looks like he is being strongly betrayed um, and that someone is feeding information to Putin. I don't know if it's the same person or just in general a theme of Putin accessing intel that, I mean, there's a lot of like hacking and cyber warfare going on as well. In Russia's chart, this is squaring Russia's Venus and Pluto. In the fourth house, which again, in this geopolitical context, represents land, nationality, and reach. So with this happening in Russia's seventh house of, could be allies, it could also be opponents, I think it likely looks like th this is directly in, in combat or this is directly in combat with Ukraine. I mean, with the fourth house, seventh house emphasis in several of these charts, it is clear. This is not any other part of the chart. This is the fourth house of homeland or nationality and the seventh house of both opponents or allies. But with Mars, Saturn, it looks more challenging, so I lean towards opponents. In Zelensky's chart, this is happening right on his midheaven of what he's most known for in his public image. So it looks like he as well is publicly doing something very aggressive. It is, on a challenging note, opposing his moon and his Saturn. I really don't like Mars, Saturn, very militaristic, very aggressive planets opposing someone's moon, which is more sensitive, more internal, and the moon is ruling his second house of uh, income, so it looks like it is financially devastating to Ukraine most likely. Um, however, it is trying his Jupiter on the ascendant, which shows that these actions happening right now, um, this is very optimistic, very abundant energy that his identity is pulling through that he is he he is fighting to the upside here like he is getting recognized and getting rewarded so i don't see it as like a net i don't see it being um the most directly harmful to him necessarily in ukraine's chart this is happening right on ukraine's moon in the second house of uh money income wealth as well which is very challenging 
and the moon is ruling the seventh house of opponents or allies so like a lot of other things are connecting it looks like it's I mean on a the most you know basic level financially extremely detrimental but bringing in the seventh house is an oppositional quality that just looks like really large-scale issues uh, that first week of April, especially the 4th to the 6th. Jupiter-Neptune is exact during this time as well. I'll get into that, speaking about that next, but the spread of something very unwanted, possibly cyber or cyber pandemic, looks likely. In Biden's chart, this is happening in his third house of news and media, and it is squaring his Scorpio 12th house stellium. So the media or news around this is against what he's trying to do behind the scenes. 12th house is behind the scenes, it's internal, and there's a conflict there. The news is very challenging as well to his mental stability. Again, doesn't take a genius, we know, but uh, when I see 3rd house, 12th house issues, it's like the media or the routine someone's taking in are very challenging to their mental health. In the U.S. chart, it's within about 5 degrees of the U.S. moon, which is not the strongest orb, but I do still see it as relevant. That with this on the moon of so many people are opposing Zelensky's moon, for example, this is literally hitting home. This is literally like internally very, very penetrating, especially the, the moon represents the people in country charts. So it's showing how the people involved, the people that this is happening to, it's the citizens that this is the most detrimental to, which leads me again to reaffirm maybe it's cyber if it's this widespread and this uh, encro encroaching on everything. The moon in the United States' chart is also ruling the eighth house of the market of finance. So the financial or economic consequences of this look very, um, you know, shaky world events lead to very shaky markets. On another note, on the 6th, Venus enters Pisces more firmly. So by the 6th, Venus is in the sign of its exaltation that it is better in. So there's a little bit of help there. Um, I, I mean, Venus and Pisces normally would be wonderful and beautiful, but frankly, with what's going on right now, I fail to see how this would improve things that much. But nonetheless, Venus, Venus in the sign of its exaltation tends to be a little bit helpful. In Bitcoin's chart, this is its Venus return. It is also sextiling its natal Pluto. And in Ethereum's chart, this will be opposing Ethereum's Venus. So this is helpful to both. Um, I don't think that it will drastically save things by any means, but it does look like on the 6th, we might get a little bit of a rebound after what could be a pretty insanely challenging 4th to 5th in particular. Now from the 7th to the 17th, Jupiter will conjoin Neptune in Pisces. Jupiter is growth and Neptune is spread or boundarylessness. So the two of them together looks like the spread of something without boundaries. And I've talked about this in many other videos that when this happened in the 1920s, um, after the 1918 pandemic, this happened in 1920 and it exactly corresponded with a random isolated fourth wave that was not everywhere for the pandemic, but it was very, very dire in select areas and islands. Um, this could be the current fourth wave building up of COVID, basically, not that it's not, it, it's, it's endemic, it's going to keep going on, but right now it could be that wave. Alongside Mars and Saturn, I do think that it could be the spread of something that is like cyber pandemic or other bioterrorism issues. I'm going to be frank, like that's what comes to mind when Mars and Saturn are together showing like direct aggressive military action is very well calculated. And Jupiter and Neptune are together to indicate widespread on a really uh, severe level. I do think of something spreading and permeating that is uh, very, very substantial. And this goes exact on April 12th. So it's the day that I'm most um, looking at this for, for something for. On the 10th, Mercury and Aries will be scoring Pluto. So I do look towards some pretty provocative, overall uh, aggressive, <laughs> aggressive communication on the 10th. However, also on the 10th, Venus will sextile Bitcoin's Mars, which is lightly helpful. However, remember, we are in the bearish moon phase from the new moon until the full moon on the 16th. So that is a much more bearish time frame. Now, jumping to the 13th, this will be when the south node is exactly on Russia's Venus and gets very close within a degree to Russia's Pluto, which looks like very, very, this is very intense. The south node directly on a planet here. Um, I'm, I, I, it just kind of confirms, you know, the amount of, uh, when eclipses are happening on a natal planet, they highlight that planet, that house. Venus Pluto is the 
deep, deep um, obsessive uh, value of land ownership, basically. And you can, like Russia, it takes its, like the obsession with increase. Um, the South Node stays at this 22 degree range for literally months until like middle of June, basically. So big, 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 um, mi like middle of April, still again, very, very dire. Okay, back recording. <laughs> I um, I went and changed into a robe because it's very cold in here. So on the 15th, Mars is entering Pisces. Now, Mars in Pisces does show, uh, I feel really strange for saying this, but the spread and combat of a spread, because Mars is action and aggression and Pisces is, is the mutable water sign of just endless spread, similar to Neptune, even though I don't agree with Neptune's relationship with Pisces given it's an outer planet, but all of this entering Pisces looks like uh, attention to a spread, attention to something uh, emitting. In Biden's chart, let me go ahead and pull that up. Um, in Biden's chart, this is crossing his south node in the fourth house. The south node is very tiring. It's an indicator of decrease or lessening. And the fourth house is, uh, in a politi politician chart, sometimes like uh, that, that nation that they represent. I don't think this represents like the U.S. land, anything happening to it necessarily. But I see it as being difficult for national or family-oriented matters even. He might have to let go of something very foundational to him. In Russia's chart, this is opposing Russia's moon, which is really challenging. Uh, it's in its financial houses, so I think another round of sanctions or actions that are financially very difficult could be happening to Russia around this time, around the middle of the month, uh, based on probably some previous actions that they took a few days earlier. In Putin's chart, this is squaring his moon in the eighth house, which is again a financial house, so I think that this, with both Russia and Putin's chart, having financial implications, it would make sense to be, for this to be in terms of punishment, um, financial punishment, or at least just financial difficulties. The moon is ruling his ninth house of foreign relations, so ties in just, again, the story of foreign, other foreign, other countries, yeah, uh, financial difficulties for Russia during this time. In Ukraine's chart, this is opposing Ukraine's sun, uh, and frankly mine, given I have the same sun and rising almost by degree, uh, same as Ukraine. It's The sun is in the ninth house, ruling the eighth house, so it does bring in trouble for a leader. The ninth house is often leaders, so I think trouble for Zelensky is likely during this time, or at least pressure, some type of force acted upon him. I don't think it looks like he, like, I, I'm going to be frank, I, I don't think he dies. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that in any way. Um, I'm not an expert on predicting death. I have never taken the time to research that, so when people ask me, when is someone going to die, I'm like, I haven't studied that, frankly. So, I, but I don't think this one aspect would indicate that, especially because it looks bad for Russia too. So the same, the same, yeah, I don't think it implies that, but it does look like trouble for Zelensky. Moving on to some of the financial charts here. Um, Mars is crossing Bitcoin's Venus on the 15th, which is not cute. Leading up to a full moon, we usually bottom out anyway, so it could be dumping into the full moon. In ETH's chart, this is opposing East Venus, which is also difficult. And on the 16th, we have a full moon in Libra, which for both ETH and Bitcoin is generally a local bottom where we're dumping into the full moon and in the days following, we rise up out. So we are probably, you know, given that this is squaring Bitcoin's Jupiter and that's generally a more positive context, we're probably bought up, we're probably dumping into and then getting some help afterwards. In Putin's chart, this is happening opposite his 12th house stellium. Uh, it's happening on it, excuse me, it's happening on his 12th house stellium. So it, it, it does look like with the 12th house being behind the scenes or um, re revelation, a 12th house new moon would be a revelation of something hidden. I think things behind the scenes that he's kept hidden uh, will become more apparent during this time. There's a big spotlight on him, big, big spotlight with a full moon on his 12th house stellium. I think usually things that are revealed from the 12th house are worse than they seemed. So I would agree that it looks it looks like uh, um, th information that is was kept behind the scenes 
is revealed to show that things are worse than they seem. However, then on the 17th, Venus will sextile Bitcoin's sun. I random in there, it's a little bit more helpful. Then on the 18th, I'm expecting sudden, sudden disruptive news given that Mercury and Uranus are together. Mercury's communication, Uranus's sudden destabilization. So on the 18th with Mercury and Uranus together, I'm looking for sudden disruptive news. In Zelensky's chart, this is opposing his natal Uranus uh, in his 12th house. So all this 12th house activity is revelation behind the scenes. Re uh, both him, yeah, revelation behind the scenes, likely of a betrayal. For Putin's chart, this is happening right on his natal Jupiter in the 7th. The 7th house is alliances or opponents. Jupiter tends to be a more positive planet than negative, especially in a day chart. So I'd say that an alliance rather than in opposition, like this is sudden news from someone that he's working with or in regards to a partnership that he's having. Um, there's a sudden announcement from someone that he is close with, I'd say, because with Jupiter, I'm less likely to think that this is negative in his sense or an opponent, more likely to think of an ally, makes a sudden announcement. Then moving to the 22nd, there's some financial things happening in a row for Bitcoin. So this is after the full moon, so likely there is a movement upward after the full moon. Uh, we go down into the full moon and up after generally locally. So on the 22nd, Venus is conjunct Bitcoin's Uranus. Venus is number go up generally, Uranus is volatility, so upside volatility. Mars is also sextile Bitcoin's natal Mars, which is very helpful. Um, Mars is market conviction and belief, and Mars is very, that, that's strength. On the 24th, Venus is opposing Bitcoin Saturn. So Saturn tends to show limitation or obstacle, and Venus opposing that is testing that in an upward sense because Venus tends to be number go up. So it looks like we're testing a resistance level on the 24th. Now, on the 27th into the 28th, Venus is conjunct Neptune and Pisces, and this tends to be, with this close to Neptune, uh, the growth of something very, very valuable. I'm cautious, though, with Mars there that it's not the best case scenario of growth. It's not something I particularly want to grow. In Zelensky's chart, this is squaring his Jupiter on the Ascendant, which actually looks pretty nice. Like, I like to see squares to Jupiter, especially from Jupiter. Like, this is exact by degree going to be squaring his Jupiter. So I actually like this in a lot of ways for Zelensky. Um, he's being helped out, I think, because if we go to Ukraine's chart... This is opposing Mars in the ninth, and Venus, Jupiter opposing Mars is helpful. Venus, Mars, Venus or Jupiter oppositions are helpful. Uh, they're different than other planets in their oppositions. Mars is in the ninth house of international foreign relations, and Mars is ruling the eleventh house of alliances and the fourth house of nationality. So I think there's a lot of help from a nearby country. The third house is usually locally, so I think that there's help from a nearby country on the 27th to 28th around then. Then on the 29th for general transits, Pluto is stationing retrograde in Capricorn. So that ends the nearly two month no retrograde, uh, near, no retrograde period. This is very close to Ukraine's ascendant, indicating the going back and reconsidering national identity. This could be some difficult negotiations as to what Ukraine can give up in order to stop the war. Just very difficult negotiations to go back and reconsider what exactly could be done to end this. I mean, not that I think this will be over during this time, but what they think could be done. Then on the 30th, there is a solar eclipse in Taurus. So sun and moon are conjunct Uranus, a destabilizing energy, and the north node, an aggressively ambitious forward moving energy to really, really have me looking tentatively to the solar eclipse on April 30th as a defining moment of the year ahead for something Taurus, both financial and resource wise, that's suddenly disruptive that happens to end April. This is happening for Putin in his seventh house. Let me pull that up, which shows that it's likely involving an alliance or a partnership with another world power. Um, it could be that it involves Ukraine, given its 
Seventh House of Opponents, but I don't think about Ukraine as an opponent to Russia. I, I don't, I, I see this usually being like an alliance. Um, that, that's, Seventh House Eclipse looks like a catalyst of it that involves aligning with another party. In Zelensky's chart, this is happening in his 12th house, opposing his natal Uranus in the 6th. With this um, happening in, during his Uranus opposition, it's not only like a midlife crisis for him it, with other things going on in his life likely, but I worry about a behind-the-scenes betrayal and his physical health and well-being. That solar eclipse in the 12th house is like a new, a catalyst event that reveals something behind the scenes that's a betrayal. The 12th house can be hidden enemies, that's why I say that. In Ukraine's chart, this is opposite its natal Pluto which is another big, big, big warning sign uh, that I, uh, like, big, big caution. I mean, a solar eclipse opposite Pluto for a country looks very, very, very difficult. For Putin, this is near his natal Jupiter in the seventh uh, alliance. In Russia's chart, this is happening, opposing their natal Pluto as well, pretty closely. Very difficult for both countries. However, it is trying the natal Jupiter in the second, so it's just an interesting, like, trying Jupiter in their chart. Like, I don't know, I, I, I help financially, there's some help there, possibly during these events. For Biden, this eclipse is in his sixth house of coworkers uh, or health issues. So I am, uh, this could be a health scare for him of something chronic that is flaring up or something long term that's revealed or really like inflamed during this time. However, with it close to his lot of fortune, I think he's fine. Um, it's, you know, Mars is trying his natal Mars during this time pretty closely. I don't see this being, you know, per, like the worst case for him. It's intense, but it's not terrible. In a financial sense, Eclipses are generally very rough financially, so I see this time being rough for the markets, including Bitcoin. This eclipse, however, is trying Bitcoin's sun, so I could see a sudden pump going into this eclipse because new moons are often local tops. So it doesn't look terrible, like it does not look terrible, but eclipses, given that they're catalyst world events, are often highly unstable. So do be careful, especially because this is at the bending of the nodes for Bitcoin, and that can be very pivotal. And for Ethereum, this eclipse is squaring its natal Sun and Mercury. Again, pretty configured. Uh, however, it's trying its natal Pluto exact by degree, which is very, very helpful. It's, it's a bit less intense for ETH chart, so it might be an announcement more about Bitcoin or something that's more about Bitcoin that influences a lot of crypto. Um, the new moon being a local top, like I said, with these helpful things, looks like we could pump into and then dump out of it. So overall, you know, down market-wise from the new moon on the 1st until the full moon on the 16th. Then relatively decent sideways, not terrible, until the end of the month when I think the eclipse could be a big market shakeup. So that is the April forecast containing both the market side of things and also the geopolitical, which I think cannot be omitted nowadays because it just doesn't make sense for me to talk about the market and then be like, but look at these other videos, so screw Bitcoin's astrology. So hopefully that helped explain how and why and what I'm expecting along with my more concise videos or more short form videos that supplement that as well, just trying to get as much explanation and of value out there. So wishing you all the best upcoming April and I will see you in the next one.